Good evening. Um, just a brief kind of confession, I suppose, and a, a kind of update. So, since February this year, I've been putting out uh, maybe a dozen videos, maybe slightly less, of me talking about my um, bagpipe journey. We call it a journey, don't we? <laughs> so silly. Um, and I've been playing in town, I've been playing all over the place, and uh, it, it has been an interesting experience, I have to say. Um, little six months of, you can almost make a film, it'd be like a little film, and that this old guy who's done nothing with his life suddenly takes up the bagpipes, and uh, then it's all like this film, you know, so crazy. Um, but I've come to a little hiatus, actually. Um, I've put there, there they are, there's bagpipes, you can see them. I kind of put them aside for a little bit. I'm struggling, I'm struggling with the tuning, and that doesn't sound important, but there is there is a little story with it. You know, when the, the, the bagpipes are ringing and everything's working and it all sort of falls into place and... It's great, but I need to be able to manage this instrument. I need to be able to. I can't go to an engineer. I've got to. I've got to be able to do it myself. And you know, it, once it's in tune, it's generally fine. But it's the hemp. This kind of cotton, like cotton material, that's in the. In the pipes, um, moves around. It gets so tight, you can't do anything. You can't tune it. Or it's so loose that the pipes are moving around, and I'm thinking, well, is that it? Is that the nature of the instrument? You know, like re reeds keep changing their tuning, and the pipes keep changing their tuning, and you know, what is the what's the cost here? You know, and I'll, I'll tell you, we'll come on to that. What the cost is, the cost can be quite can be quite profound. So I've kind of like lost my enthusiasm for a bit. I've not played them for two or three weeks I think I've got the flute out and playing the flute again just to be able to be making some sound some music um, so what's the elephant in the room yeah so the elephant in the room is as you may some of you might know I presumptuously put myself forward to play at a d-day service all those guys who lost their lives, yeah, you know, f uh, to free France and Europe. Um, 10,000, I think, on Omaha Beach, possibly. And the Brits, I think, did, was it, um, wasn't Omaha Beach for the Brits, it was Journo, I think. And, um, yeah, so I, mean, I don't know an awful lot about it, but, you know, we know about death, don't we? But I thought it would be quite good to support this service. And I wrote to the British Legion and, you know, would you like a piper? I was playing a couple of hymns and stuff and and a kind of variation on uh, Bluebells of Scotland. I was looking like Bluebells of Scotland played in a sort of slower, sort of melancholy way and then leading into Amazing Grace. Played quite simply, quite straightforward. I wasn't doing anything too flashy with this and when it's in tune it sounds it sounds okay um, and it, it felt like a turning point because it was my first I did it it was my first event you know amazing given that it's for me just sort of like three months in rather than like three years so a bit presumptuous maybe but I had to think about this and it sounded okay, you know, doing the slow Bluebells of Scotland and Amazing Grace and it, you know, once it's all in tune and, you know, to the trained ear, it might not sound great, but I thought it would, it would, for a small service, it would bring something. Now, obviously I was kitted out with the, the whole kit, with the kilt and the Glengarry and, you know, all of that hose didn't have the sporran on. I felt that that was uh, and, and not required 
for this. Um, but I had my sleeves rolled up because I was doing a job. You know, I explained to the British Legion that I would have a shirt but sleeves rolled up. And then, they, yeah, I said, you'll get it. You'll understand. And um, it was a bit breezy. It rained in the morning. Um, but the rain held off for the uh, most of the events. Then when I was walking up the field to the service, there were far more people than I had expected. There was... Uh, there were soldiers there, there were veterans, there were families, there was media there saying, where are you going to stand? They're going to film you. And, you know, the clergy were there and British Legion were there. And it was a lot bigger than I'd expected. So I was a bit daunted. So I said to the British Legion, I'm going to go down to the bandstand and play this piece through. So I said, it's a bit, bit of a giveaway because people don't know what's coming. But I just want to make sure it's going to sound. He said, yeah, yeah, go for it. So I went down to the bandstand about 100 yards away, I suppose, from this crowd and played the piece through and it sounded okay. I'd been struggling with the chanter read because I dropped it, bought a new one, it didn't arrive. So I was struggling with that, kind of lost C, but it came back. So that was a bit nervy and the middle drone was on the move. So I was a bit twitchy in setting the, the pipes up, but in the bandstand, just before the service started, it sounded okay. And people were coming to me and they were saying, can you play Highland Cathedral? I said, in principle, an easy tune, but I'm going to stick with what, with what I've got planned, you know, so, which I did. And the, the media, the camera people said, where are you going to, tell me where to stand, which I did. And, uh, you know, I, I was I was quite looking forward to it. I thought it was nice to be part of it. And then uh, the vicar, Joe, she did her prayer and I knew I was coming on. And um, obviously I had to, you know, strike the bag and everything. And I don't know if people know that's what you have to do. And then um, I played the piece. Um, you can hear the middle drone it, either it's slipped down it's not it's not in tune it's not massively out but it's not in tune and uh, this was put on the news the whole service with me playing um, loads of people wanted to talk to me at the end of it there were people queuing up and you're trying to sort of divvy yourself between people and some are just friends and that and and I thought that I turned a corner. I thought this I, I've done my first event. You know, this is what I was sort of thinking about. And obviously jumping the gun a little bit, but uh, did my first event, and um, I was quite pleased. And you know, loads of good feedback. A couple of you know, even a church organist. He thought it was, you know, really good. I knew it wasn't that good because I knew it was it was kind of minimal and slightly out of tune. Um, but then I got trolled. Somebody had found my email address and they wrote uh, very critical. They said it was sad. You know, this is, um, you know, D-Day, 80 years. And, and they were saddened that the um, the quality of the playing, the embellishments weren't there, the, the tuning was off, which I knew. Um, not so bad that most people, I mean, I, I can only get the the impression that most people thought it was f absolutely fine. But the trained ear, no. And I wasn't doing the D throws, I wasn't taking risks, I did just got a quite basic tune. I mean, there are embellishments on it, in Amazing Grace I play in a kind of a particular way, if you've ever seen it. And, um, you know, I'm still learning, but, I, you know, I thought leading up to the service that was quite a strong piece for that tuning, unfortunately. But this, the email, um, it was so critical, you know, some kind of pipe major or someone. And you think this is a bit elitist, isn't it? All this stuff, you know. And um, so I sort of like took it on the chin and sort of like put the pipes aside for a bit. And I've been trying to tune them and I've not, yet been able to i'm sort of working with the supplier you know i've tried 
and lengthening the drone reed in the middle, the mi middle reed, hasn't really, I can't change it much more before it won't work at all. And it still hasn't, hasn't got the tuning. I think, well, it, it's got to be me. There's something I'm doing wrong, you know, I mean, oh, this is a perfectly good kit. Um, so I've not, I've not been playing them. So it's kind of, I'm waiting for kind of metaphysics, I think, you know, waiting for something to happen um, outside of myself. Um, I'm not going to force the issue. Um, obviously, getting trolled, someone finds out your email address. I, so somebody there, I don't know who, must have, you know, they would have said, oh, I want to write to this piper, you know, and uh, and someone said, you know, so it, it would have been an individual, it wouldn't have been, an, it wasn't the British Legion, it wasn't an organisation, it wasn't someone who knows about GDPR. It's just someone who felt, yeah, you want to write to Peter? I've got Pete's email, you know, and so... But I don't know who it was. And um, I've not responded. I formulated a response. You know, I just want to say I was very aware of the gravity of the situation. I've Even in my job, I've put up a display digging out some old media stories as well because it wasn't on the media till later because obviously it was very secret and also thinking about the the opening sequences to um, which I think is Omaha Beach um, saving Private Ryan and how the Allies were sitting ducks I don't know probably 40,000 people killed over several days I mean astonishing to think I don't know the exact figures but it is massive so this wasn't meant to be stupid, and there is no bagpiper can really do justice to, um, you know, a, that kind of conflict. All you're doing is trying to help people remember um, and to reflect. And for the most part, it did that. Um, but for this, you know, somebody in the know and this quite critical email, so... So the pipe dream, I wouldn't say the pipe dream has become a pipe dream and come to the end. Um, but I'm kind of now waiting for something, I think. You know, for the last sort of three or four months, it's been my life. You know, every evening I'm playing on the beaches and in the fields. Um, and it's all kind of like drawn to a close. And it leaves a bit of an empty feeling in a way. I'm so used to, you know silly really but people filming you talking to you and waiting for you to turn up at the beach which obviously I'm, I'm now not and um, so I value your thoughts and prayers you know maybe maybe it will come back I'd like to think so but it will be a case of getting support learning those embellishments looking at the music and thinking no I'm going to have to do it. I'm not going to fudge it. I'm going to have to do it. So, um, I've removed some of the videos. So I didn't feel comfortable with some of them. But if I do a good piece, I will put it out there. And, uh, yeah, wish me luck. So, thanks for listening. Bye.